here and they have limitations, they'll automatically shift. They'll come down to where they feel comfortable. You're gonna have more power inside of your bubble or inside of your position. Okay, a lot of people aren't gonna score like yourself, but like myself, okay, you probably like a two and a half, okay? They're gonna essentially shift, and that's where they feel comfortable. But life doesn't exist that way. There's lots of different areas where you need to push and commit to pushing, okay? You can't always control the environment. And I wanna set them up for success, not failure. So I have to teach them these habits, and I can do it through this test. Okay, I can say these are the things that we're gonna work on if they struggle with this position prior to introducing a full-fledged movement, which is that push with resistance, whether it be a TRX, kettlebell, cables, blah, 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 I have to understand how to keep these areas potentially loaded or potentially stable to save them from bad injury in the future, okay? So I would use this test for that, especially if they're like a one. And I would never get that again by introducing a full movement. So one of the things I like to teach people off the hop is instead of doing a full pushing movement at some point in that range of motion, they may lose the integrity of that position. They need to learn how to initialize a push pattern. And the cool thing with this one is it also teaches you how to initialize a pull pattern. So instead of doing a full push up, I would learn a scapular push up, okay? Scapular push up, my pelvis learns how to stay in a neutral position. My head stays in a neutral position. That's part of my spinal column, okay? I pull the shoulder blades in and I push the shoulder blades out. When I'm creating a push pattern, at no point should I get a full exertion of force where the shoulder becomes unstable, unless I'm a boxer, or I know how to get there without overextending and keeping everything else organized, okay? If I don't have that control, eventually something breaks, okay? So I have to have that control. So I would never again get that from doing a full push. I would learn these components first. And that, again, helps you with a pull pattern because that's how you initialize a pull pattern, right? You have to have that control of the pelvis and the ability to pull the shoulder blades back to create a healthy pull where it doesn't become limited and I'm flaring and my shoulders come up. So that's a good exercise to start people with, okay? It helps their shoulder health, their pelvis health, even their feet. My feet were getting engaged and earning that dorsiflexion we talked about in the toes and the ankles. So that's a great exercise to start people with. Now, what's to happen if they do this and no matter how hard they try, they're sinking in? And I'd start from here. This is where I develop systems or abilities to understand who I'm working with, their limitations, and I make slight, subtle changes to allow them to be successful. So if I don't have that, if I don't have that, again, I'm gonna give them exercises we'll struggle with, we'll never get better with, we'll get frustrated, and you will too. So there has to be a way where you can have progressions and regressions to each particular roster of exercises you have, right? I would suggest creating a roster of exercises, right? Um, so that would help me, okay? Again, if we were to analyze yours though, I'd say about two and a half. Why is it a two and a half? There's a little bit of lacking control through the pelvis. It's slightly behind. You have enough limb strength. Let's teach your pelvis how to stay aligned too or active, okay? Cool.